an abusive background, but some alcoholism, some mental health issues, was a quiet kid. I was probably the least likely to ex uh, least likely to succeed in high school if, they, if I were to win an award. Um, and to see that all these struggles and woes and things that felt like they were happening to me actually happened for me because they prepared me for that day that I actually went out and made myself vulnerable and started my first business like a lot of the listeners did as well. And the fact I was successful when over 80% aren't. So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by Ben Albert, who is not only the owner and founder of Balbert Marketing, but he's also the host and curator at the Real Business Connections Group. And he's going to explain a little bit more about what that really means and how he got to to be doing this. This was a pivot for his business. So welcome to the show, Ben. Awesome to have you here. Deborah, I'm so excited to be here. I, I need a better business and a better life myself. We're all <laughs> leveling up, so I'm honored to be here. Oh, no, well, yes, I same here. I was saying to my um, the guest I was talking to yesterday, it's like, I actually just love the fact that I get a chance to meet lots of different people, learn lots of new things. I think it's fantastic, and I think we can always always improve. So you have got a little bit of an interesting story in terms of, um, you know, the, glo the global pandemic had a pretty major impact on your life, didn't it? <laughs> it sure did. It sure did. Tell us a little bit about what that what happened and, and, you know, where you came from, where you are now. Yeah, so when I was a kid, I had a bunch of basketball players on my wall, not a single entrepreneur, never aspired to be a business owner, and and basically went the typical route. You know, I, I went and I got good grades in college or university, went, got a job, completely unrelated to my major, but that's beside the point, <laughs> um, and found myself in the sales and marketing industry, um, slowly worked my way up at the marketing firm was a sales executive. We were doing video production all across the states, literally every major city you can imagine. And then COVID hit, and we don't have to talk about COVID. The whole world was going crazy, and my company was offering video production, but there was no travel, there was no in-person video, there was no fulfillment, there was no sales, there was no place for Ben Albert. So I was furloughed at that time, and again, I never even really imagined I'd be a business owner or an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, but I was kind of thrust into it. And I revamped my LinkedIn profile and I started applying to jobs and none of them were sticking. And I was like, I have a skill set. I'm good at what I do and we can dissect every little thing we want to talk about today. But I took a shot, got my LLC, started my business started a Rochester, New York. That's my hometown, Rochester, New York, in New York State, a locally based business podcast. And I guess the rest is recent history. I mean, in just over a year, completely replaced my sales executive income. And right now, just the vision gets bigger and bigger. And I'm blessed to be helping people every single day, even though I never imagined I'd be doing it when I was younger. No, oh, that's fantastic. Great. Great to see that you're kind of doing what you love. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what it is that you actually do for people. I know yes. that you help them, but tell me a little bit about how that actually really works. So the joking like networking event thing I do to throw people off is I tell them I ask questions for a living. <laughs> yes, I saw that on your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> <laughs> and what I mean by ask questions for a living, there's two categories, two lanes. In the podcast, Real Business Connections, it's a network of five shows I run and host, produce, the whole shabam. Yep. Um, it's all about asking the right questions, being an active listener, and being a Sherpa and kind of guiding the guests, but really just listening to the answer and getting the knowledge from the people that have it um, to the people that need it. And that's exactly what you do, Deborah, and that's why right. I love your show. And the other category in Balbert marketing, I'm not a, hey, I've got the three-step solution for you. I rolled out of bed one day and realized this was exactly what you needed. Yep. No. It's about slowing down, honestly, it nauseating some people sometimes with my questions and discovery and ensuring that I'm a good fit and that I can actually build a program that would possibly take them to the moon, but no guarantees um, and building marketing plans for my business. So I'm really in the question asking game and that's why I like <laughs> podcasts like this. 
Yeah, and no, I think I'm probably similar. I was. Were you a curious child too? Who was always asking, you know, and why and how and. <laughs> Yeah, I was a pain in the butt. I I, I joked <laughs> I had basketball players on the wall. I was the shortest kid in school, quite literally yeah. the shortest boy. Um, there was a little girl named Olivia Lee, and I prouded myself on being slightly larger <laughs> than the little girl. But yep. um, since I was small, I was quiet and I was reclusive, and quite literally, I was not outgoing. Like I would actually make myself smaller. And part of that struggle and being bullied when I was younger. I didn't realize it. I mean, it was happening for me that that's where the curiosity came from. That's where the growth mindset came from. That's mm-hmm. where the patience came from. I wasn't the class clown, but I was the observer. And nowadays, I, I basically observe for a living, which is very cool. Yes, I can imagine. I, I must admit, I do enjoy um, people watching. And I guess Thanks. that's what we get to do when we're, when we're doing our podcasts and things too. Yes. Okay, so um, the listeners of this show, from what we understand, are sort of generally kind of business owners, um, uh, sort of st- established businesses. How do you, how do you suggest that they, or why do you suggest that they would even look at doing some of the work that you're doing? Like, why Absolutely. would you want to be on a podcast? Why? Would, I mean, I could ask these questions of myself, of course, but why would you want to be on a podcast, <laughs> and why do you want to actually um, improve your networking in a, a virtual online sense? Sure. Um, first off, if you're not looking to get better and you're great on your business and you're already crushing it and, and you feel like you can't level up, maybe yep. it's not for you, but most people feel like they want more and that they can do more. And I'll simplify it, two major categories. Um, first, let's start with more of the woo and softer stuff. Getting confident answering any question People are going to ask you questions about your business you've never even asked before. So the next investor meeting, the next sales meeting, the next presentation, the next new hire that really doesn't understand what your company does, you have already honed your skills of communication that you can be a leader, communicate your vision to the team, and build other leaders, build your team out, and really be a face of the company. Uh Maybe you feel like that's not you. You can still elect a member that has a communications background, is in marketing or sales, to be that face. But it's a great way to build just affinity and branding. And and the second category is it drives sales. Um, I'll use a really simple example. And um, honestly, I, I don't even know why he put his chips on me, but I guess he thought I was good enough. I had Chris Van Vliet on my podcast. Chris Van Vliet's a four-time Emmy Award-winning entertainment interviewer. Yep. He's been nominated for 11. He's friends with Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. He's yep. uh, he's interviewed Oprah and basically all the big names in the United States. And mm-hmm. he came on Little Old Ben's podcast. Now, yep. I try to be, hum- I am humble and I try not to be braggadocious, but that provides third-party feedback. Yep. That provides credibility to me, that I would not have had. So you uh-huh. get to surround yourself but with great people, form strategic relationships, sometimes referral relationships. And whether you're a host and bringing the people to you or you're a guest coming to hosts that have already built established credibility with their audience, you can get your message out there and actually monetize the mic by getting the message out, like I said before, from the people that have it, which is you, to the people that need it, which is possibly the listener. So <laughs> that's why I think podcasting is great for any business, small or large. And I think it goes back to that sort of age old, age old adage that you know people buy from people. And the more of this type of work that you do and the more people get to see you in a natural environment, not the staged photos, not the perfectly presented videos, but just you being you, means that people get an insight into the real person behind the business. As like you said, whether that's the business owner or if it's a, a member of the team, it's going to give that, I mean, A, the, the, the brand awareness, the, the personal brand awareness, but B, that kind of a connection. Like sometimes some of the, the people I've had on my podcast, I never get to meet, but I I keep in contact with them and I feel like I know them, even though I probably never will get to meet them. And there is something about that that is really quite special, isn't there? It is. It is. And if we were at an in-person networking event and we met someone and chatted for 30 minutes, mm-hmm. wouldn't we have their business card and bring, uh, send them phone calls and, and maybe go golfing or hang out or 
yeah. who knows what. Podcasting really just is a medium to do just that. And I think it's very cool. I, I, again, I'm in the States, so you're from the future. And yes, I am. I'm a, I'm a day ahead of you. <laughs> on my birthday, I got six messages. Uh, sorry, the day before my birthday, birthday. Yeah. I got six messages saying happy birthday on June 22nd. My birthday is June 23rd. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I am getting sent love from the future all because of the <laughs> silly thing called the internet. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely phenomenal, isn't it? So for people who, um, you know, you, as you said, you've got people who have already built some credibility, who already have the followers, who are already very comfortable doing this. And there'll be others that will be really, really nervous about it. And they're going to go, well, what on earth have I got to say? You know, how, how do I go on a podcast and talk for 30 minutes an hour, whatever the podcast kind of length is? What am I going to say and, and what's interesting that I've got to say? How do you help with that? Sure. Um, that's, that's a good question. And it is case to case. Um, mm -hmm. To give you a broad stroke, everyone has a unique story. You would yeah. not be in your position, especially if you're a business owner or mm -hmm. if you're not the owner, but you're moving up in the company. The reason you're listening to this podcast is because you're a go-getter and you're going to continue to level up. If you're an owner or you're a go-getter, you know something that people don't and need to hear. And mm -hmm. even if you feel like you know something that a thousand people know, you have a unique story and you're going to tell it in your own point of view and you never know what listener. This is silly and kind of high in the sky, kind of just visionary stuff. But yeah. if a thousand people listen and we only affect one, it was worth the time because we got to affect that person. And if they can go and help three more, think about the impact. Yes. So if you feel like you're the best kept secret or you feel like you have imposter syndrome, and you don't have anything to say, I'd argue you're probably wrong. And mm -hmm. if you're somewhere in the middle, really, honestly, the best way to get good at it is to go out and try it and practice it because you're never going to get uh, better without, without going practice. out and doing something new. Yeah, and that's absolutely true. I mean, I think I'm getting better at this each each podcast that I do, <laughs> but I've been doing this for you know a, a couple of years now, and, and the first few... It was so nerve wracking, and you weren't quite sure what to do, what to say. But it, it becomes just a lot of fun once you, you know, get into the swing of it. Um, interesting. I've actually just been doing an exercise with uh, one of my marketing partners, and you know, I often kind of go, I don't know what I've got to say either, and how do I actually articulate what I've got to say? And they just actually sat down. And they got me to tell my life story from, you know, from almost being born up to where I was. And what was really fascinating about that was you suddenly remember some of these things that you just took for granted that were just part of your normal everyday life for you. But in actual fact, when you look back on them, you think, actually, that was pretty special. So is that something that you actually get your your uh, people to do as well as think about where they've come from and where they, what the, I suppose, the hero's journey, what they've experienced along the way, what the other challenges they faced, Yeah, I've, I've, I've talked about, so I don't do this with my clients, but I've done it for myself and I've talked about it and really brainstormed on podcasts about exactly this. Um, mm -hmm. What I recommend people do is go online and search long list of values. So there's lots of value exercises. This is the easiest one you could ever do. Okay. Long list of values. Don't overthink it. Just highlight the ones on that list that stand out to you. And then set an intention to narrow it down to at most five, possibly as little as three or two. And start crossing them out, crossing them out, crossing them out. As you go, go into a deep dive and think about how certain values have came up multiple times in your life. Think about your life story. Hmm. Narrow it down to five, maybe three. Now that you have those three values, that's when this could be a two-hour journaling exercise. Or you can just do this a little bit each day or each week as you go. Start just looking at those values and thinking about your past and times that these values came up in your history. Then you've got a set of values. You've got a set of unique stories that are unique to you and no one can tell them the way that you can. And whether you're forming a marketing message, um, doing a motivational speech, no matter what you're doing, you could be writing a blog or you could just be doing it for yourself. Yeah. You have a better understanding of who you are, what you value, and how you can help 
other people that value a similar thing, or maybe they value something different and you can partner and kind of be the yin to each other's yin. So uh-huh. that's my opinion on that. And there, there would be the pillars that you would use in, in marketing terminology, yes. isn't it? But you can also have pillars for your own personal brand as well. And I think that it gives you some structure to actually be able to have those conversations, do those talks, do the messaging and whatnot. Now, I know, because I've been following you on LinkedIn, you're a big kind of LinkedIn fan and you follow all the algorithms. You see what LinkedIn, what's <laughs> going on on LinkedIn. Um, I, I'm really quite surprised. I've been on LinkedIn for a long, 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 long time. I think I was in one of the top sort of 5% of people who joined LinkedIn many, many years ago. But there's still people who are, are, are using it for the first time. Or maybe they've been sitting in the background and haven't really done anything with it and are suddenly going, oh, maybe I should use this. Um, how do you help people? Or what would you say to people about what LinkedIn can be good for, how they should use it? Um, because you do give a lot of advice about how it works, but I wonder, you know, what are your kind of top LinkedIn yeah. tips? <laughs> so I used to think, and most people still think, LinkedIn just a place that you post your resume. And yeah. if you're looking to apply for a job, you they may, might check out your LinkedIn, but they might not. But it's better than your Facebook where there's cans of beer or things that are unrelated. That's what <laughs> I thought. Yeah. And then when I was furloughed from work, I got on LinkedIn originally to look for jobs. Mm-hmm. And when I decided to start, a business related podcast, LinkedIn became an opportunity. So really simple. I don't want to give you every single detail, but I went to the State University of New York, Brockport, SUNY Brockport. So what I did is I got on LinkedIn and reached out to SUNY Brockport alumni, other graduates that were business owners. And I said, hey, I saw you went to SUNY Brockport as well. Congrats on making it big time. To be honest, I just started my business. It's a new passion project, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I started a business podcast highlighting the best local area owners. I thought you'd be a good fit for it. And everybody, not everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, but anyone who responded was warm to have a conversation and most people said yes. So what LinkedIn became, it wasn't just a resume platform. It was a social networking for business to business where I was actually reaching out to people that had a similarity to me so we could create something together. And guess what happens in the long run? They become friends. They become mentors. They were able to turn what could have taken me years upon years, if not decades, into a year or two of success, really. Like I uh-huh. I built my business quicker. And I know a lot of the listeners have already built a business. This is a way to scale that business. Yeah. If you can go from zero to hero quickly, imagine if you're already a hero, where you can go if you just add a little juice to your strategy. And LinkedIn, I mean, we could talk about a lot of things. LinkedIn's just one slice of the pie. But for me, it's a really large slice, and I love it. Yeah. I mean, I've actually made a lot of friends, I say, that are not even in the same country as me that we talk to. But I tell you what, one thing that has really pissed me off is these people who send out generic messages, um, and then, or they find your email from LinkedIn, and they send them to your email address, but they're really, really generic, and they they hop straight into the, and by the way, have I got a deal for you, because we do websites, and blah, 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 blah. Um, what would you say to people about you know, the first connection that you make on LinkedIn? Because I personally, I like to make sure I've actually researched the person. I've got a little bit of understanding about them. Um, and I certainly don't go into you know selling mode on any of my messages with them. Mm-hmm. I, I really do see it as a chance to make a connection and to make a, a potential friend. But what, what's your advice on that? Yeah, I mean, you know, to make a connection, make a friend, connect because you want to. Yeah, I agree that They piss me off and I used to kind of just joke with them, but I found myself like kind of getting a little rude with some of these people that did that this morning. (laughs) Oftentimes it's not even a human. It's a, it's an automation, just sending you automated message. But this is the, the symbolism I like to create for people because imagine you walk in a room and all you see is crap. All Mm -hmm. you see is poop, junk. It's a mess. And then you see a pony. You get to be that pony because when everyone's sending junk messages that no one likes, that pisses everybody off, and you actually read someone's profile, I'll use the example I already gave. Hey, Deborah, I saw you went to SUNY Brockport. 
congrats on 10 years of business ownership. I'm proud of you. You're a rock star. You just became the pony because they just got 10 junk messages and your message shines and stands out. So when there's difficulty and struggle, if you zig when everyone's zagging and think. you do it different, you'll stand out. So I encourage the spam because it just makes people happier <laughs> yeah. when, yeah, it when, does, they, when get they get a, get a real message. message. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's a really, really good way of doing it because I, I was just sitting here giggling to myself because this morning I actually got um, one of these kind of junk spam messages and said, <laughs> you know, I've been looking at your Better Business, Better Life. And as a leadership coach, there's nothing really published out there about you. And we can make sure that you can, you, you know, you'll have more. And I went, did you actually Google me? Because I dominate the first seven pages. And then even the next 10 pages after that, I appear on each of them. So there's a fair bit of stuff out there. But then I thought, why am I engaging with this? Because I'm actually almost encouraging the behavior. I, I did say to them, um, you know, if it was me, I, I actually like to, first of all, get to know a person. I like to ask them a few questions. I don't even think, I only think about whether I can help them or not. That's how I approach things. And so I was getting really wound up and I thought, you know what, you're just buying into um, responding to their generic messaging. So maybe it's just best to let it go. <laughs> let it go. I, I, yeah. I will say one time, only one time. So don't take the one time and assume it could happen every time. Mm -hmm. um, they sent me the worst generic message ever. And I said, yeah. hi, are you a human? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm a human. What's up? And I'm like, I'm going to be forward with you. The mm -hmm. two messages you just sent me were filth. And he's like, well, why? And he became a client of mine. Ah, excellent. <laughs> and I'm not saying that's going to happen every single time. No, but sometimes just asking a question like, hey, are you uh -huh. there? Knock, knock. Then yep. at least the bot will turn off and a human will take over for the bot. And there right. is a possibility that they're actually pretty cool. And Decent they're a great person. It. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't count on it. A lot of it is <laughs> just kind of junk. But anyways. Yes, no, fair enough. Okay, cool. So what's the, we did, we didn't realize this at the beginning, but we got a bit carried away. I mean, what is the sort of thing that you've been most proud of in your life so far? Because you've done, you've achieved a lot in a short period of time. And I'm just wondering, you know, what are the things you're most proud of professionally and personally? I, I think I already kind of brought it up. Starting this business, finding yeah. true alignment with purpose and I'm just scaling it quicker than I ever could have imagined. And I didn't, again, I didn't think I'd be a business owner, an entrepreneur. I, I came from not an abusive background, but some alcoholism, some mental health issues, was a quiet kid. I was probably the least likely to, ex uh, least likely to succeed in high school if, the, if I were to win an award. Um, yeah. And to see that all these struggles and woes and things that felt like they were happening to me actually happened for me because they prepared me for that day that I actually went out and made myself vulnerable and started my first business like a lot of the listeners did as well. And yeah. the fact I was successful when over 80% aren't, I'm proud of it, but I really feel like I'm only six out of 10 and we're still heating up as we go. I was going to say, so well, then what's next? Because, yeah, it's a great <laughs> achievement and well done. But what's next for you then? What does the future look like? What is your, um, I mean, we talk about our 10-year target or big, hairy, audacious goal. What is that for you? Yeah, it's funny. I don't have a specific big, hairy, audacious goal. And I have thought about this. But I've realized okay. that if I win the day and if I'm doing things that light me up and they're helping people, mm -hmm. the big, hairy, audacious goal, like I can set it but I always end up pivoting and going in another direction anyways. Um, right. Right now I'm comfortable, but I want to be on, I want to be able to bring on a large team. I want to be able to completely systematize exactly what I did and turn yeah. it into books and training. Cause at the end of the day, I, I don't want to see someone struggle. I want to be able to see them do what I did and what's in the future is possibly connecting with you and some of your listeners because I'm not at the 50, 100, 200 employee part yet. Um, mm -hmm. So what's in the future is really just figuring how, how I can take a good thing and expand it. it for a greater impact. And it's not even just monetary and it's not for me. It's it's really just to make a, a better place really for all of us <laughs> is, is how I see it. 
Yeah, I think they're the same. I mean, we're always about making a huge difference in the world, and that's always been my motivator. I, mean, I do yeah. have a number of people I want to help, and that's certainly my big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, but yeah, it's very much about you know wanting to make a huge difference, leaving the world a better place than what we came into. And I think sometimes you know people get worried about. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm not motivated by money, but money is certainly an enabler. And I think that the bigger we can grow our businesses and the more um, we are able to grow the wealth within our teams as well as ourselves, the more people we're able to help, right? It's a little bit like the Robin Hood thing is if you can actually create a good business where you've got good income coming and you're being paid and compensated appropriately, then you have the ability to do more of the work for people who perhaps can't afford um, to work with you. And that's the way I always approach it. Is that a similar philosophy for yourself? Oh, steal, steal from the rich and give to the poor. That's Robin Hood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No stealing is required. Really, it's it's none of us are superhuman. We're just ordinary people, but we find something we're good at. We put a lot of time and effort into it. We obtain income and wealth because of it. And then what we do with that money really is what defines us. Mm-hmm. Are we going to share it with our team? Are we going to give generously? Are we going to donate our time or are we going to be a selfish jerk? I think you and I both agree that you obtain the wealth and it just gives you more capacity for impact, yeah. but it's not the reason for what you do. It's just yeah. a, a tool that you get to use. Absolutely. Okay. Well, hey, look, I would love to hear from you because you've given us a lot of information so far, but I'd love to hear from you. I always ask for the top three tips or tools. Um, so you've done an amazing job, uh, you know, from being furloughed, what, less than two years ago to where you are right now. What are the kind of the key things that have happened in your life or the key things you've used that have really made a difference that perhaps the listeners could take advantage of too? Yeah, we'll, we'll draw some, we'll draw from some themes just to, just to kind of yep. keep it going. So if you Perfect. aren't already on LinkedIn, set up your LinkedIn profile, start posting. If you're already posting and your team is on LinkedIn, um, and this is a whole topic in itself, but set up an ambassador program. And what I mean by an ambassador program, I don't have to give you every little detail. It's this simple. Um, You figure out how to set up a group. I know someone on your team can. You set up a group on LinkedIn. Every time Deborah posts, every time Ben posts, every time Mark, Mike, and Elizabeth post, they send it to the group and all the members of the ambassador team engage on each other's posts. Mm-hmm. So anytime you put out a company post or a personal post, you've got an army of ambassadors from your organization all jumping on board. So we can actually trick the algorithm a little bit, build a little momentum and get your message out to more people. So I guess I'll take that as two because I can be long-winded. One is get on LinkedIn if you're not yet. Yep. And start posting. (laughs) Start posting. If you're already posting but an ambassador program doesn't exist where people in your company are supporting each other's posts, Mm -hmm. create that ambassador program and and provide incentive for people to want to join and be an active. They're going to brand your company for you. You don't have to do all the work. Your team can do it with you. The third thing I'll say, um, it's the, oh, I almost, I came up with a name for it. I don't, I didn't have a name for it. Now I do. It literally just popped in my head, Deborah. What is it? One kind, one kind reach out a day. And what I mean by one kind reach out a day, and you can do 10, you can do 20, you can do 50. I'm not going to limit you, but once a day at minimum, you pick up your phone you scroll to the bottom of your text messages. You uh, scroll to the bottom of your social media messages. Maybe you scroll to the bottom of your email. Whatever works best for you. And you reach out to someone that you haven't spoken to in six months to a year or even 10 years. And you take 45 seconds to look at what they're doing and just have one kind reach out a day. And when you do that, that's 360 some reach outs a year. That's tens of thousands of reach outs in your lifetime. And if we're if we're trying to make the world a better place, we can do it 45 seconds at a time just by reaching out. Because here's the thing. You don't know if someone's in need and mm-hmm. you might reach out at the perfect time and a more business mindset 
you don't know when someone's ready to do business with you. And yep. if you reach out at the right time, you might just remind them that you're uh, exactly what they needed. So you can do it for personal or you can do it for the collective impact. You can't go um, wrong with the one kind reach out a day. I, that's beautiful. I actually love that. I've written <laughs> that down for myself to do because I was just thinking it's a, it's a really good, it doesn't take much time because sometimes you look at, you get overwhelmed, right? You think about all the people you haven't been in contact with. It's like, oh, it's just so much. But one a day is doable, right? Just one kind person. And, and maybe you, you find yourself a bit more time, do a few more, but just start with one. I love yes. that. Yes. And you can choose how you follow up. Um, This is a side tip. If there's any networking events, if there's big business events, ribbon cuttings, you can invite everybody to one spot. So if you're doing 365 reach outs, it doesn't have to lead to 365 cups of coffee. Um, You can kind of utilize that and bring, maybe you throw a party and invite everybody to the party. So don't feel like you have to overwhelm yourself with it. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. Oh, it's really, really cool. Hey, look, this has been great. Um, I'm so pleased that we got to meet. I'm, um, for the listeners who don't know, we actually had to postpone this morning's session. Ben was very kind and, and agreed to reorganize it. And he's about to head off on a, a bit of a family trip for a long weekend to spend some time with his family. So he's he's squeezed me in before he heads away. So I very much appreciate that. Um, love the stuff that you shared. I think that just, you know, being, not being afraid to just give things a go, do one one thing each day. Get onto LinkedIn. Don't worry about what you have to say. Um, I think at the end of the day, we've all got things that we can say that will help people. So just go out there, give it a try. But if you get a chance, go through that values exercise. I think that's a huge thing to do. It can really remind you of the things that are important in your life that other people could potentially get some value from too. So a lot of stuff in there, a um, more, lot more than that, of course. But yeah, how would people get in contact with you, Ben? How do they find out? about the Real Business Connections Group. Tell us a little bit more about how where they can find you. <laughs> Lots of stuff in there and hundreds of hours. Um, if yeah. you just, wherever you're listening to this, you can just type in Real Business Connections um, mm-hmm. because it's on all the podcast platforms. You'll find the website if you type it into Google or Yahoo or wherever you do your searches. Just yep. type in Real Business Connections. You'll find a network of podcasts. And you'll find my concierge service where I actually, you know, help produce and promote podcasts for the people that want to start one, for the people Mm -hmm. that just kind of want to monetize the mic and be a guest. I help people with that too. But it all starts with a listen and a conversation. Wherever you're listening to this, just type in Real Business Connections and uh, we'll start the conversation there. Now that is fantastic. Hey, look, well done on everything you've achieved, Ben. Um, thank you so much for sharing everything with us. I look forward to staying in contact. I can stay in contact with most of my, my guests and, and maybe one day we'll actually get to meet when I come to your side of the world. Your side of the world is beautiful. So let, let, let me come to you. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm more, I would love to host you over here. I love this country. <laughs> I love sharing it with people. But yeah, thank you, Ben. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks.